Hey, what's going on guys? Justin Nelson here. I create all the content on the Happy Fox Productions YouTube channel. And I've been getting a lot of comments lately on how I do the sound mixing for my short films. And I'm not a professional sound mixer by any means. I just feel like the sound that I get from my setup is, it's passable. So I might, you know, might as well make a tutorial, right? But anyways, enough for the introduction. I'm going to go ahead and play a little part of the first scene so you guys know what we're going to be mixing. And I'll see you guys in a second. Wow, this is good as sound. Perfect condition. Even comes with an extra battery. How much does a new one go for? Got this one off another guy for 1400 That's a hefty price. Yeah, but she's smart as a whistle. Whoa! Did you do that? Nope. Fingers aren't even on the trigger. All right, guys, so that's what we're going to be taking a look at. So first things first. A little bit about my audio setup, I use a Rode NTG3, and then for my audio recorder, I use a Zoom H5. And for me, that gives me good preamps, so the audio that you heard, everything came from the Zoom H5. Now, the first thing I do is I record dual audio, so I have my audio recorder and my camera, and then I sync it all in post-production, and typically the way I do that is... I, instead of having to actually sync it all by hand, which I used to do, I honestly let Premiere Pro do the work, which is extremely valuable. So let's say you have a clip like this. You know these are the two clips that need to be synced together, but you really don't have the time or you, you didn't have a large enough slate to actually find a marker for us to slate. So you could just honestly highlight it all, hit synchronize, audio, and boom, Premiere synchronizes it for you. And then I just alt click on this, oops. I'll click on that, delete that. We no longer need the uh, scratch audio. And now we have our audio from our professional setup. <laughs> and simple enough, right? Simple enough. So now we have, let's see what we got. So um, <clears throat> do you fly here out here often or? Uh... Nice acting, Dylan. So. Now, typically the way I do it is I like to get all my clips synchronized and then after I synchronize them, I put them all in one timeline. I usually call it editing sequence or something along that. And I clip out all the best takes that I like. And me, because I know the way I work and the way I direct because I'm editing the films that I direct, I know that typically the best takes are the last takes because that's when we stop rolling because I know we got it. So most of the time I go towards the last, the end of each take and that's usually the one that I like and then I drag it into my main sequence, or I'm sorry, I drag it into another sequence and then I do the full cut. Once I have the cut locked for the actual dialogue scene, it should only sound like this. Wow, this is good as sound. Perfect condition. Even comes with an extra battery. Got this one off another guy for 1400. And it sounds okay, but it doesn't sound professional whatsoever. It's what it sounds like is we had a decent mic that was close enough to their faces and that's it. But that's not going to cut it when it comes to professional cinema or these days, YouTube. Because everyone on YouTube is getting so good now, it's crazy. Um, so, the next thing I like to do is I like to do a temp mix. So once I have everything roughly mixed, I go ahead and start adding on the actual sound elements that I need. So I went out and recorded some Foley of the quadcopter and some foley of just the ambient neighborhood. So this is the next asset that I add in there. Wow, this is good as sound. Perfect condition. And that was just a little bit of ambient, some gnat sound, just to give it a little bit of a, a weary sound to the scene, because no scene is ever completely quiet. And I feel like that's a mistake a lot of people make. They want to add noise reduction. They want to make their scene as quiet as possible. But in reality, nothing is ever completely quiet. So it's always good to have a little bit of room tone, not sound, ambient sound, whatever you want to call it. It's always good to have a layer of that under your mix. You typically want every sound in your scene or short film or feature film to have a meaning for it. And I feel like that's what makes films professional is everything that's in there has a purpose because in the professional world every asset that is put into a film costs money everything costs money nothing is free every sound effect that is put into the film you're paying a sound mixer to put that in there to mix it yeah you're paying someone to go out and record it and the same thing for your visuals the last sound element that i have in here is the actual sound of the quadcopter which we went out and recorded at a park 
And so all of these sounds together, you get something that sounds like this. Wow, this is good as sounds. Perfect condition. Even comes with an extra battery. How much does a new one go for? And as you noticed in this shot, this is actually not the audio that we used for this shot because we had the drone flying in the shot, so that means we cannot use any audio in this wide shot. So what we did is I took the audio from this shot and just overlaid it onto the master shot, and nobody's gonna tell the difference because whether it is or isn't slightly out of sync, nobody's gonna be able to tell. So we just simply placed that over there, so it's a neat little trick for you guys. How much does a new one go for? Got this one off another guy for... Perfect, and another thing that I did is as the camera, because you want the sound to be coming from the camera. Not literally, because that's not how it works, but you want the audience to feel like as we back away from the drone, the sound of the drone goes away. So I just added a small keyframe from zero dB down to, what is that, at about negative 13 dB. That just emulates, okay, the drone is going away. And that is the basic mix of how we do this first scene. And then let's say if we wanna have this drone fly over the character, then we went to the park and recorded sounds of the drone flying over the mic really fast, which is what we got here. No. And then we just use, we just got ADR of this actor saying, whoa, and then we just add that on top, and then you get a little swish sound. Whoa! Did you do that? Nope, fingers aren't even on the trigger. I'm and then at this point, we want the drone to sound like it's really far away, like it's off doing its own thing, half a mile away. The audience doesn't need to know where it is, but all we know is it's super far away. So now we have sound effects of the drone really far away. And then we wanted to have sounds of the drone that comes in to sweep the banana. So we have another drone swoosh sound effect that we just mixed in. I don't know, she just does what she wants. Oh look, you brought us bananas. How much you Perfect, now that is the rough rudimentary cut of this first scene. We have everything cut and we have all of our sound mixed roughly. We're gonna take this out of Premiere Pro guys because Premiere Pro is a great audio editing platform but sometimes you have to take it up a notch and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into Adobe Audition and that is wonderful because we get a straight up dynamic link all the way over there so we're gonna hit edit in Adobe Audition and then we're gonna hit sequence and then we're just going to name this um, first scene, scener, tutorial, blah, blah, blah. And we want the audio handles to be five seconds. That essentially means every audio clip is going to have a five second head and tail on the, on the back of it and the front of it. So you have about five seconds to mess with each clip. We want to open it in Audition. We want to send our keyframe metadata. And we also want to render all the audio, all the audio effects that we've already done in the sequence. So then we just hit OK. And here we are guys, we are now inside Adobe Audition. And the great thing is, is we are in the edit audio to video mode. So that means we can have our video here, or if you have a dual screen, sometimes I like to take my screen onto my second monitor. But for you guys, I'll keep it here. So now we have everything we had in Premiere Pro, but now we have inside a dedicated uh, DAW, or digital audio workstation. So what we can do now is actually go in and start mixing it just to sound a little bit better. So the first thing, which is just a little bit extra information, we recorded using the Rode Blimp with the, with the Dead Wombat or Wombat Dead Cat on top of the mic and that gives it a real muffled sound. So the audio off the bat sounds slightly muffled, not extremely muffled, but I'm sure if you had a really professional audio system, you could definitely hear. I used the JBL LSR 305 studio monitors going into the Focusrite uh, 2i4. So I could hear a good amount of detail on this and I could definitely tell there needs to be some mixing done. And what I used to do a while ago is I'd go into every single clip and mix every single one, or I'm sorry, edit every single one. And I realized why do that when you can just edit your actual timeline. Right now I'm gonna go in track effects because I, everything I want to happen is gonna happen on this track. And so I, what, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure my timeline is organized. I want to make sure all my dialogue is on this first track. So right here, just move them up there. 
And for the sake of the tutorial, I'm not gonna go through the entire track and do it, but you just wanna make sure all of your audio clips are in here. And then the next thing you wanna do is at, well, what I like to do is add a little fade in between them. I just like to fade them together so it's not so abrupt. Sounds perfect condition. Even comes with an extra battery. Usually what I like to do is to add to the character, they're both kind of geeky kind of guys. He is a really weird Craigslist seller that's trying to get rid of this haunted drone, and he's kind of a <laughs> pedophile kind of guy that's just really weird and has no friends. I guess that's the way to explain his character. At least that's what we were going for. And they both kind of have funny ways they talk. He likes to talk with a slur, like, when he talks. So what I like to do is every time he does that, I like to animate the levels a little bit louder so, the, so it accentuates that area, so the audience can really hear that he's slurring his words. Right now, I don't have the time to do that, but you have to really go into that kind of detail when you're dealing with your audio. So like what we were gonna do before, we're gonna go into track effects. And the first thing I like to do is I like to go into filter and EQ, add a parametric e equalizer. And then I like to, um, oh, oops, that's a notch filter. What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm sorry, I like to go into the parametric equalizer. And I already have a preset set up, it's already on custom, or you could go to vocal enhancer and just adjust. But essentially what we're doing is we're lowering the, ro the um, <laughs> what was that? We are lowering or rolling off the lower ends of the frequencies. So all the subsonic sounds or there's just the lower frequency sounds are gonna get er uh, erased or eradicated using this equalizer. And then we're just upping the highs just a touch and then we're keeping everything the same. I typically don't like to add frequencies because that can kind of just distort it. I usually like to take away frequencies, and that is what we're doing here. So we can just preview that. Wow, as good as it sounds. Perfect condition. Even comes with an extra battery. Wow, as good as it sounds. Perfect condition. Even comes with an extra battery. Okay, so after we do a slight EQing, I like to go in and do a de-essing effect, or it's called the de-esser. You could just go in, and then it'll just kind of roll off any of the higher frequency S sounds when people talk and they give us sound. And there's a lot more you can do with this. Just for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just gonna choose the preset. But you really wanna dial in the frequencies and figure out the range of where every actor's vocal range is. Some of them are more on the lower end, and some of them are on the higher end. But this is just something that I like to do is add a de-esser effect. Wow, as good as it sounds. Perfect condition. It even comes with an extra battery. How much does a new one go for? And I wish I had more time to go into detail with this, but at the moment we do not. So the next thing that I like to do is I typically go in and you can add a single band compressor, which to really quickly go into a compressor, it ups your signal while <laughs> That's the best way to ex explain this. It'll up your signal without having it peak, uh, peak above a certain point. So let's say if your audio levels are really low, you could add a gain effect. You could just turn up the volume of your overall track, but then you're going to start reaching negative 5 dB, negative 1 dB, and for theatrical release, that is just extremely loud. It might not sound loud to you on your speakers, but in the theater, that is extremely loud. And so you could add a compressor, where you have your, your, your base frequencies boosted, but then your high frequencies are still gonna remain at like negative 15 dB, negative 20 dB. So you're essentially compressing your track. You're upping it and lowering it at the same time, which is compression. And that is the most amateur way to explain that, but that's the best way I can explain it. Cause like I said, I'm not an audio professional. And for this specific case, I did not need, need to use compressor, but what I did use is a hard limiter. And that is essentially, imagine taking a pair of scissors and just cutting your frequencies off. So, and it acts as a compressor in a way, but it's not the most advanced compressor. So what I did is I upped my um, gain just by 0.4 dB, just to add a little bit extra. And then I made sure that my audio levels did not go above negative 9.3 or negative 8 dB for YouTube work. And then you could just add that, and there you go. Wow, as good as it sounds. Perfect condition. It even comes with an extra battery. How much does a new one go for? Got this one off another guy for 1400 And so none of the audio that is in this track is going to go above negative 9 dB, which is great because we don't want any clipping audio. And then we would just go through here, fade all of them together, 
And then the last thing that I like to do is add a mastering effect. And this is more optional, but I just like to do it because, I don't know, it just gives a slight extra clarity to my vocals, which is what I like to go for. So again, I roll off the lower frequencies. Not a lot, not as extreme as this. But I like to lower the lower frequencies. And then you can add a slight reverb, and I'm talking like 2% reverb, just to give it a slight clarity, but that might not even be necessary at times. And then you would just go through all of your other effects, your other audio sound effects and EQ and mix them to sound the best for your scene. And then what you would just do is hit edit. I'm sorry, you would just hit export, export multi-track mix down, and then you would hit entire session. And <laughs> session. And then I like to export it as a dot .wave, uh, full 32-bit float, and then you would just export it. And then you just go back into Premiere Pro, into your main composition, and then I would just import what I rendered out into my main composition. So now I don't have all those audio effects that we had before. It is just one solid track. And then if you need to go back and mix some more, you have it all right here. Obviously, I spent much more time. I spent about a day and a half working on this entire mix. And I just did this in about five minutes. But you definitely want to spend the time and mix it properly. So then at the end of the day, you have something sounding like this. You just does what you want. Oh look, you brought us bananas. <laughs> How much you selling it for? For you, my friend? For you? I'll give it to you for free. You gotta promise me three things. You'll feed her twice a day. You can't talk to her. And do not let her catch you alone. Playing pool by myself. Talking to a quadcopter! So unless you want to be like me, then I suggest you learn to speak up for yourself! What a sad man. What a sad man. Anyways, hope you guys learned a bit in this tutorial. I know it wasn't that in depth. I do plan on making a much larger video. It's gonna be about 18 minutes long, a full training course on audio and sound. But again, like I said in the beginning, Take everything I say with a grain of salt. I'm not an audio professional. I just kind of, I've just been mixing the audio in my videos for so long and I've just figured out a way that works for me to get decent audio and I'm still practicing and still trying to get better every video that I do. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to follow me on social media, check out the notes below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.